Guys, what's the number one thing we play Realm of the Mad God for? It's not the challenge, it's not the hundreds of bugs, it's not the eagles, for you guys at least. No, of course, it's for those beautiful clean pointy white bags. Just look at it man, the clean white sprite with a cyan ribbon that reminds you of diamonds. The resource you used to mine with your dad back in the day before he didn't return from the store. We want more white bags, which is why I'm making this video for you. I have too damn many of these and I just forge whatever I want while not playing the game. And today, I will teach you how to get way, way, way more of these. Okay, first, you're not getting anywhere by playing a shit class. F Samurai, F Contras, F Trickster, you gotta choose a strong class. Now this depends if you're solo or in a group and how experienced you are. When I say solo, I mean you might be around others but it's uncoordinated through voice or text chats. We will start off by pretending that you have no friends. Solo. The class that you choose must have a strong mix of damage and speed. If you're not as good at rushing dungeons then damage is much more important. But if you can rush and you're willing to learn, then the speed will be more important when playing mostly solo. Really strong damage classes, especially for less experienced players, are because of their power with just tiered gear or common UTs. And these would be like for example melee, so paladin, warrior and knight. Necro and wizard are pretty damn good. Necro is my strongest recommended class for beginners by the way. Sorry for spoiling this tier list video. And also Archer. Sorcerer and Summoner are also pretty cool. All these classes have either high base damage with their weapon, or strong damage with spamming their spacebar, or both. Now if you're a more experienced player, you really want to rush dungeons, because by the time you clear every minion in the dungeon up to the boss, you could have rushed to it, killed the boss, and fully exalted your account. Faster or better rushing classes would be like Rogue, Mystic, Bard with the Punji from Snake Pit, and Warrior. Rogue is probably the best of these right now because of its insane damage buff that it received with the latest update, and the buff to Planewalker, which basically invalidates Trickster, which used to be the fastest class in the game. I mean, it still probably is, but because you get the invisibility as well with the Planewalker, it just makes it so much easier to rush. It's also one of the easier whites to get, in my experience. It's like a 1 in 80 drop chance from the Sprite World. It's also a joke to craft. You just need 4 crappy UTs, 120 Forge Fire, and the Sprite Mark. Now a lot of these classes that I mentioned have either broken legs and thus don't have speedy, but you can change that and make a class significantly faster by getting a snake eye ring. These are OP. The stats aren't anything special, but its active effect of giving you speedy for 2 seconds on ability use is what makes it awesome. Because at the very least you can swap to it for a split second, as you're going to use an ability, press space and then you go zoom. These are a common drop from snake pit, I find it drops from the main boss 1 in 10 times around. And you can also get it from the treasure room. One of the best ways to get many 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 more white bags is to learn how to play the game faster. Yep, thanks for the obvious tip Seb. Now what I mean is learning to do the bosses faster. Doing bosses faster doesn't only have to mean obtaining more damage through weapons or other gear, but what I really mean is knowing how to achieve your full potential in every phase and dealing consistent damage throughout an entire boss fight. If there's phases you're not confident in so you sit back the entire time, that would make the boss take longer and thus less white bags and average. You should always try your best, without committing seppuku, to figure out how to commit in phases you're not sure about on. Instead of sitting it out every time and making it longer, you can check out my gameplay videos. I also got a lot of guides coming up in the future so it's important to subscribe right now. Another thing you can do is record your own gameplay so you can see your point of view and see how you can improve. Now you can do even better against bosses by equipping better loot. Now you might be like, Seb, I'm not that good at the game. I can't get get strong gear, they're all from the hardest dungeons. Shush! That's not true man. In fact some of the best gear is surprisingly common, like the Planewalker that we just talked about, but also like Demon Blade that drops from an earlier game dungeon. It actually does the highest damage out of any sword in the game. And then on the other side of the coin there's garbage endgame gear. Speaking of coins, like for example the Trickster Decoy from Gemsbok, or like the Cult Staff. It's so cool, but so bad and sad man. Now I am planning to make many many class guides in the future, but to give you a extreme TLDR, for sword classes the tiered swords are generally great and D-blade for when you can push in. For wands you have to get conducting wand from Mad Lab second boss, wand of the fallen from mountain temple, or Fiyoji one from Janus. Those do a lot more damage than tiered. For katanas, Doku no Ken from crawling depths, celestial blade from purple dragon in lair of draconis, or void blade from the toxic sewers, they all kick the tiered katanas asses. And for bows get a strong tiered bow for when you're close range and a doom bow from undead lair for when you
you need more space between you and the enemy. Four daggers, get the best tiered dagger you can, and the corruption cutter from the second boss of Cursed Library actually does the most damage, unless that changed with the latest dagger buffs, I'm not sure. And then there's staves which are in a sad situation, because there's nothing really too interesting until end game, so just get the highest tier that you can. And of course, there's also stat boosting gear. Now I always recommend getting a defensive set for when you're less confident against a boss, or for rushing, and a DPS set for when you have big balls. You can just swap between them whenever you're ready. Speaking of rushing, you will at least double the amount of white bags you get if you learn how to rush every dungeon. Now it is a bit of an ask, but almost every clearing dungeon can benefit from you rushing, especially if you have worse gear, since clearing the enemies will take even longer. And other than items like snake eye ring, you can't really make rushing too much easier, consumables really do the trick. Now there are some dungeons that are basically impossible to rush like nest, maybe it's a uh, very easy with the new power creep rogue, but I'm yet to test. And you might find that most dungeons will be hard to rush initially, but they will become a lot easier with practice, trust me. I remember when I was a wee young lad, struggling with Abyss of Demons rushes, and now I do it on Petless 08 consistently. Now you would die trying to be honest, but it will pay off in the long run. You can check out my gameplay videos on pointers on this. Now if someone else is already rushing to the boss, don't be a comatose chimpanzee, instead of standing still you can also rush, but rushing to the same boss while someone else is quite dumb, instead rush in different directions. If it is a dungeon that can spawn a treasure room, like for example snake pit, undead lair or toxic sewers, that's another way that you can increase the amount of white bags you get, because a treasure room is almost as powerful as the boss, depending on the dungeon, and many 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 dungeons have them. Just make sure to learn which ones have them so you're not rushing randomly in a dungeon, risking your life for nothing. Now even if someone else is rushing and there isn't a treasure room, or for whatever reason you can't rush, many dungeons actually drop white bags from the minions. Yes, you heard me right man. Well, it's not that many to be honest. I might as well tell you all of them now. In the fungal cavern, the big mushrooms drop fungal breastplates. In the cogbold steamworks, the overclocking amulet drops from all the bigger minions. In shadows, the minions drop the UT armors. And yeah, that's it for white bags. But you should sometimes count cyan bags and ST bags as white bags in a lot of cases, because they can be as good and often better. And if you check out the realm wiki, you'll find half of the dungeons in the game have minions that drop either science or ST bugs that can really benefit your account. This includes consumables as well. So instead of standing still like a bozo, you could always pick yourself up a nice item and some fame while someone else is rushing. Now for ways to further boost your white bag chance. The best way by far is looking at the events calendar. Love it or hate it, Decker loves to spam events. And the ones you'd be most interested in are the 1.5 times or 2 times drop raid events. There's also the chest events because they can drop whites from the chest. And sometimes they have tinkerer events where if you collect enough tokens you can just claim a white bug. It isn't as cool because you don't get to see that beautiful pointy cyan ribbon tied white bug. But it is an easy way. There's also loot drop potions or clovers which is very pay to win. You can get many for free from the calendar, missions, battle pass and the chest events I just talked about. It's best to use these in smart locations like honestly if you don't know how to do O3 or Shudders yet, you should save them in the gift chest until you do. And the best time to use these in my opinion are before the O3 mini boss dies, or before the second boss from Shudders dies. Then you want to play very efficiently for the short remainder of the loot boost or clover. Lastly for white bag chance increasing, and this is more of an end game goal, but you can get exaltations. If you exalt every character of the same weapon type you get a permanent 25% loot boost, which includes white bags. And if you're extra pathetic like me, you can exalt every single class for an extra 10% on top of that. Though I strongly don't recommend it. The 25% loot boost is kinda worth the time, the 10% isn't. You don't need to fully exalt characters to get this boost as well. Every fifth you exalt each weapon class character, you get 5% loot boost. So for the first 5%, you need to do at most 5 of each of the dungeons listed on this tab on each class of a single weapon type. I also got an exhortation guide coming to make it even faster for you. Now if you just want to see that gorgeous, plump, but also sleek, angelic white bug, there are dungeons that drop it way more often than others. Like for example Snake Pit, Sprite World and Ancient Ruins, but it's much smarter if you go for the white bugs of higher value and ones you actually need that would benefit you. Like the one from Ancient Ruins is straight poo poo. Decide your character that you want to improve, it could be the one you're using to farm whites or another, then use the DPS calculator that will be linked down below 
below to compare weapon damage to see which one does the most. Keep into account the other variables like range and spread because they can decrease your damage in practice. And then look on the Realmai wiki at where all these items drop including the non-weapons. Then find where the dungeons drop and you're ready to go. This is your best temporary go-to until I release the class guides. Now you know what can sometimes be better than a white bag? Yep, it's the like button. So smash it to let me know you made it this far. Also appreciate all my supporters on Twitch, YouTube and Patreon. Consider supporting today if you like these guides because man they're not easy to make. Enjoy the rest, I love you. Okay now for some controversy. It's been a while since we had some of that around these parts. I'm going to teach you some special Seb Chuf tech called Smart Leeching and also how Soulbound works. Soulbound damage in Realm is an amount of damage you have to deal to qualify for loot. You would not get a bag unless you do enough damage. Any more damage after that does not increase your loot chance, it just makes killing the boss faster, which I do recommend usually, but we'll get to that in a second. Back in my day, we used to use floppy disks and horses for transport, and soulbound damage used to be very tough to get. You had to put in a lot of effort to qualify for soulbound on some enemies, like the events, and doing even more damage prevents others from getting soulbound and increases your chances of some items. Pretty scummy, I know, but items are Nice. Now that wasn't great game design, but now the soulbound damage is pathetically low. Land like 10 shots at most on an event on the average character and you'll get soulbound, meaning that you can deal a tiny bit of damage then leave to do other things like killing mobs to get other items instead of wasting your time at the boss and then you can return to kill it. When I said that you want to kill bosses faster to get more white bugs, I really meant that when that's the only thing you can do. When I want to min max my gameplay, I jump around as many boss enemies as possible especially in the realm, then kill lesser enemies for items since there's biome UTs and I'm still yet to get one because they're insanely rare, and then only return to the events when I see the red dot is gone meaning they're dead, and then I teleport on the silly people that are still there. It's what I did to get these two event whites on these HPEs. And I also got this Oreo on this extremely low level HPE from a Pentaract. And everyone calls this extremely lucky, which it definitely is, don't get me wrong. But in my opinion, I think only a small portion of the realm community would have actually gotten an Oreo in this circumstance. Because you need to deal with the perfect amount of soulbound damage with this crappy sword to all Pentaract towers, use perfect movement with the low speed that I have to get soulbound on all five towers. This is an example of how this video gets you more white bags that you otherwise wouldn't. And unfortunately I can't give you an exact on how much damage you need for soulbound because you can't exactly count the amount of damage you're doing to enemies unless you have like 300 IQ like me, but you just gotta learn from experience. And now that you know what soulbound damage is and how badly designed it is, you can limit test it and see how you go. Keep in mind that if you nexus or if you enter a dungeon the soulbound damage you dealt is nullified and you have to do it again or you miss out. Now if you can believe it, I got even more tips for you to increase your white bag chance. No damn way. And this is by playing with others. For less experienced players, playing solo will always be tougher. You'd get more white bags and have an easier time if you played in a mass of randoms. Best way to do this is to go to one of the busy servers. US East is always packed. US East 2 and EU North can also be good at some times. And then sometimes US West 4, US West and US South are actually alive. This can change though and probably has if you're watching this video months after I posted it. You can join my discord at discord.gg slash and ask in the help channel on what the current active servers are. Or any other questions you might have, we have the best Rotomega community around and all your questions get answered promptly. Now if you're more experienced, something actually better than playing solo is playing in an organized group. Even if this just means two people, because every person adds a small amount of HP scaling. But the damage a stacked character brings to the table is way worth it. And if they're a really good player, it just increases the chance someone will rush to the boss for you. And then you guys just obliterate the boss much faster than in a random group or solo. The more of these stacked people, the better, but too many can be a bit tough to coordinate with. Another reason why playing with a coordinated group is OP is because you can organize buffs and debuffs to maximize your dungeon clearing speed. Like for example, you wouldn't want two warriors. I mean, it's better than being solo, but you can't stack the berserk buff, silly head. But with those two players, if you can get one to bring a power instead, 
Berserk. Not only do you get the roughly 50% damage increase from Berserk, but you can also get another 50% on top of that from damaging from the Paladin ability. There's also many other damage increases like Curse, Armor Break and Expose. If you have a player bringing each of these, good lord man, you're going to get banned for the amount of damage you guys are doing. If the players are skilled enough, they can also bring multiple buffs per person and swap between them if their pets is also good enough. Like for example, the Paladin and Warrior can also curse on top of their Berserk or damage if they have the Abyssal Insignia or the Hive Master Helm respectively. Also slows a very overpowered and underrated debuff that many classes can inflict. It increases your survivability by a ton because it puts enemies on a leash, but it also helps you deal way more damage, since you have more confidence to push in and the boss will be slower moving. If your group does have all skilled players, you can coordinate rushing to find bosses and tea rooms as efficiently as possible by splitting up. And if you are playing in this group, you must take advantage of the new party system. Instead of sitting on the portal waiting for each person to come in into the dungeon, which can be annoying, make a party and call in the party chat or in your voice voice chat for people to teleport on you when you're in the dungeon because after you make that call instead of outside the portal you can just start rushing right away. If you want to become a godly demon realm player make sure to subscribe because I'm planning to upload heaps more guides. Catch you next time. Peace.